We're looking at problem 5 from the uh, WebWork Central Limit Theorem homework and we're going to examine what's happening here. We're looking at uh, a vendor who's selling some pop bottles. A pop bottle has to be able to handle a certain amount of pressure because that carbonated pop kind of uh, puts some pressure on things. It needs to be able to handle at least 150 pounds per square inch otherwise then the bottle could break. A proposed bottle vendor claims that they're producing bottles that have a mean pressure of 157 psi and a standard deviation of 3 point uh, of 3 psi. Uh, the bottler strikes an agreement with the vendor, decides to buy some some bottles, but he says that he's got to test the bottles first before he's going to pay for them. So they're going to test. Uh, uh, They're, they're going to test uh, 50 bottles. So let's look at the theory here real quickly. Here's the idea. The guy who's selling the bottles claims that his bottles are normally distributed with the mean of 157 and a standard deviation of 3. So the distribution of those pressure, the pressures that the bottles can handle are distributed like this. We're going to uh, come into this situation and uh, and take a sample, oops, I didn't mean to do that, and and take a sample of, uh, let me get back to my drawing pad, and take a sample of size 50. And then we look at the mean that we get from that sample. Now what the problem says is that it gets one less than what the manufacturer said it was supposed to be. So our sample is right here at 156. That's the mean of our particular sample. But the theory says, the, the central limit theorem says, that if we looked at all the possible samples of size 50, if the mean was really 157 and the standard deviation was 3, then the distribution of all of those sample means would have a mean of 157, and it would have a standard deviation of 3 divided by the square root of 50. Now what our first question is asking is how do you find this area to the left of 156? So we're looking for this red area over here. And of course you all know this is a normal distribution. It's got a mean of 157 and a standard deviation of 3 divided by the square root of 25. So you know how to do that. Let's uh, just fire up R real quickly. And that can be easily calculated by simply looking at the p-norm, because the p-norm finds the area to the left of some particular number of 156 in a distribution that has a mean of 157 and a standard deviation of 3 divided by the square root of 50. Okay. One fifty six mean of one fifty seven. Oh, <laughs> that that was the wrong amount, wasn't it? Because it's uh, the square root of fifty. It has to be the the square root of n. A typo error. <laughs> All right. So that's the amount that we get, and you'll notice that I put that in there and and uh, tested it. Now let's look at the next problem just real quickly. Get a feel for what's happening there. So I can make all of this work. Uh, the idea there is that we're just going to change things and now they're saying what if the the mean of the original population had have been 8 instead of 7? So it just changes that mean to 8. Of course this mean will still be the same as the mean that's over here. This, the standard deviation didn't change so that all stays the same. We'll be able to calculate that amount using R again. But the only thing that changed here is this mean changed to 158. Now, this E minus 6 means that this decimal point needed to be moved six places to the left. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros in the 1. See if, if the decimal place had been there and I moved it six places to the left, that would have been what it would be. 
And so that gives me a correct answer on that one. Okay, that's it.